get ready to blow your mind. Scientists are calling it a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. Deep in the Philippines' largest island, Luzon, archaeologists stumbled upon an incredible stash of rhino bones that were butchered by ancient humans using only stone tools. This jaw-dropping find shatters our previous understanding of human migration, pushing back the timeline for human habitation on the island by a whopping 600,000 years. The Philippines has been spitting out mind-blowing archaeological secrets in recent years, leaving us with burning questions. Who were these mysterious humans, and how did they conquer the vast oceans surrounding Southeast Asia? Let's dive into the fascinating story of our ancient ancestors. It all began around 709,000 years ago, when someone on Luzon took down a massive rhino using nothing but prehistoric stone tools. You might think this is just another day in the ancient history books, but trust us, it's not, it's a total game changer. For a long time, we thought humans weren't supposed to be hanging out in the Philippines until around 60, 7,000 years ago, and that was based on a single bone found in the Kalau Cave on Luzon. But now, thanks to this groundbreaking discovery, we're taking our understanding of human history and giving it a major upgrade. The recent finds on Luzon have blown past our previous timeline by hundreds of thousands of years, reshaping what we know about early humans not just in the Philippines, but across Southeast Asia's island region. So what did researchers uncover? A nearly complete fossilized rhino skeleton, 75% to be exact, with unmistakable marks left by ancient stone tools that were used to carve out its meat and marrow. The signs are clear someone was here, a long time ago, using some seriously primitive yet effective tools. Here's the rewritten paragraph. Now, let's dig deeper into how scientists uncovered this jaw-dropping evidence of ancient humans in the Philippines. The rhino skeleton was found buried in layers of long-dried mud that had sealed away a much older riverbed. At first glance, it seemed like just another fossil find. But things took an electrifying turn when researchers got to work determining exactly how old these fossils were. To get an accurate read on the timeline, they collected samples from different sediment layers and even extracted enamel from one of the rhino's teeth. They also analyzed quartz grains nestled in the soil above and below where the bones rested. And what did they discover? The bottom layer was a whopping 720, 7,000 years old, talk about ancient. The rhino tooth itself came in at 709,000 years old, while the top layer clocked in at 701,000 years. These mind-blowing dates paint an unmistakable picture. Humans were in the Philippines way earlier than we ever imagined. Here's the rewritten paragraph. So, how did scientists nail down the age of this incredible fossil find? They used a cutting-edge technique called electron spin resonance, or ESR for short. This method tracks how electrons accumulate in materials over time as they're exposed to radiation. And it gets even more fascinating when you realize that dating controversies often erupt when findings contradict what we thought we knew. But not this time, folks. A team of independent experts gave their seal of approval after witnessing the meticulous care with which the researchers applied the ESR technique. Aliester Pike, a leading archaeological dating expert from the University of Southampton in the UK, was among those who endorsed the findings, saying, they've nailed it. Now that we know humans were hunting massive creatures like rhinos 700,000 years ago, one burning question remains who were these ancient hunters? Here's the rewritten paragraph. Let's dig into how this mystery finally unraveled. Back in the 1950s, archaeologists uncovered some major clues on Luzon, ancient stone tools, and massive animal fossils. They were onto something, but couldn't quite pinpoint when these finds took place within a time frame known as the Middle Pleistocene, all spanning from 120, 6,000 to 780, 1,000 years ago. Fast forward to recent digs in northern Luzon's Kalinga province. The team unearthed an astonishing 50, 7 stone tools and over 400 animal bones, including monitor lizard, Philippine brown deer, freshwater turtles, and stegodons, a prehistoric relative of mammoths and elephants that's now extinct. But the discovery that really put everything in perspective was finding rhino remains. This breakthrough allowed scientists to nail down an accurate time frame for these incredible finds. Now, let's talk about the people who left this legacy behind. It wasn't likely Homo sapiens, as they didn't evolve in Africa until much later, we're talking hundreds of thousands of years after this era. The prime suspect. 
Homo erectus, an ancient human species that first appeared nearly two million years ago and was the first member of our genus to venture out of Africa. Here's the rewritten paragraph. This new evidence from China and Java, where Homo erectus fossils were discovered dating back to the same period as Luzon's rhino remains, really narrows down the list of suspects. It seems our ancient butchers might have been Homo erectus, but not so fast paleoarchaeologist Thomas Injico is keeping an open mind. Without human bones found on site, we can't be 100% sure who was behind those butchered rhinos. Maybe it was someone else entirely, like Homo floresiensis, the hobbit. This tiny, isolated species lived on Indonesia's Flores Island around 60,000 to 100,000 years ago and developed its unique traits due to centuries of living alone just 3,000 kilometers south from Luzon. This intriguing possibility adds more fuel to the mystery of who exactly left their mark on Philippine history. Here's the rewritten paragraph, fast forward to 2016. Two groundbreaking studies in nature revealed some jaw-dropping discoveries on Flores Island. Fossils of a grown-up and two kiddos, dating back an astonishing 700,000 years, showed us an unbelievable phenomenon regular-sized humans shrinking down rapidly to just under 3.2 feet tall. Scientists think this tiny human species might have been a dwarfed descendant of early Homo erectus that got stuck on the island. Now, could our Luzon Rhino butchers have been connected to these little people? Maybe, but until we find some human remains on site, we can't make the link. For now, there's no solid proof that these two mysteries are joined at the hip, or should I say, the tiny hobbit feet you won't believe how wild our history gets. Right around that time, Southeast Asia was buzzing with unknown human species, and it's like each island held a secret. The lead paleoarchaeologist called it, you could have had a treasure trove of discoveries on every single island. But here's the million dollar question, how did ancient humans even get to Luzon? It was Sel and still is, surrounded by deep water, making it seem like an impossible journey. Now, we might think that our ancestors built boats to sail across, but hold up. These were early humans who hadn't yet figured out how to build vessels for long-distance sea travel. So, what's the real story behind their arrival? The adventure is just getting started. Meet Susan Anton, a paleoanthropology rock star from New York University. She's got a fascinating twist on our understanding of ancient humans. They were way more clever than we gave them credit for. You might have heard that early Homo erectus weren't too shabby, and Susan is here to back it up. But this gets even better. Research suggests that Stone Age people in the Mediterranean Sea were using boats a whopping 130,000 years ago. What does this mean? It's time to question everything we thought we knew about our ancestors' capabilities. So, did ancient humans really cross those Southeast Asian seas on purpose, or is there more to the story? Susan thinks there might be another way to look at it, and we can't wait to dive in and explore. But here's where things get really wild. Susan Anton thinks that ancient humans might have hitched a ride to those far-off islands on tsunami waves, or even whole chunks of land and debris ripped loose during typhoons. It's like they stumbled upon a natural boat service. Now, as more evidence emerges of Homo erectus finding shelter in these distant lands, scientists are starting to wonder. Did they actually have some control over getting there? If that's the case, get ready for history to be turned upside down. And speaking of game changers, let's talk about this incredible rhinoceros skeleton discovery. Not only does it rewrite the timeline of human presence in the Philippines, but it also makes our understanding of early hominin history go from a small puzzle piece to a massive 10x bigger picture. This rhino skeleton significance just keeps piling up, not only does it push back the clock on human settlement in the Philippines by a big margin, but it also shows that an island like Luzon could have been home to early humans way earlier than we thought. And here's the kicker. This ancient species was most likely not Homo sapiens, which means there were other hominins roaming around the region. Now, let's talk about those butchery marks on the rhino bones. It's clear that our ancient ancestors knew how to get creative with tools and make a meal out of their prey. But they're not alone in this skill. Other sites like Chikushin in China and Nengebung in Indonesia have similar evidence of butchery activities, proving that this was a widespread survival strategy for early human species. Now that we've uncovered a piece of the ancient puzzle, 
it's safe to say there's still so much more to learn about those early hominins in Southeast Asia, their habits, how they adapted, and what made them tick. This Philippine discovery is a game-changer, but it also raises big questions.